Welcome everyone, join us today as we pay tribute to Dolores O'Riordan, the unforgettable voice behind the Cranberries. From her rise to fame to her struggles and untimely passing, we'll explore her remarkable journey. So let's dive in. Dolores Mary Eileen O'Riordan, born the 6th of September 1971 in Ballybricken, County Limerick, in Ireland. She was zodiac sign Virgo. Dolores, the youngest of nine children, two of whom had passed young, was raised in a devout Roman Catholic family. Her father Terence, worked on a farm and had became brain damaged after a motorbike accident, and her mother Eileen, worked as a school caterer. Named after the Lady of the Seven Dollars, Dolores grew up in the Archdiocese of Cashel and Emley. She began singing at a young age, performing in front of older students at school, early public performances in local pubs and learning traditional Irish music. Her childhood included hardship, such as a house fire and years of being sexually violated by a family friend. Dolores attended Laurel Hill Colister FCJ in Limerick, where her musical talents were evident early on. She started piano lessons at 12, performed in school, and learned the guitar by 17. Dolores won numerous slogan song contests and became head girl, although she often focused more on music than academics. Encouraged by her mother to pursue college or a religious path as a nun, she chose instead to leave home at 18 to pursue a career in music. After facing some hardship, she joined the Cranberries, beginning her journey to becoming a rock star. In 1989, brothers Mike and Noel Hogan formed the Cranberries with drummer Fergal Lawler and singer Niall Quinn in Limerick, Ireland. Quinn left the band within a year and suggested a new vocalist, Dolores O'Riordan. She auditioned with a few of her own songs and impressed the band with her voice, especially on a rough version of Linger. The band quickly decided to bring her on board. At the time, Dolores was still a student at Laurel Hill Colister FCJ, but she left school to focus on her music career, aiming to be in a band where she could write her own songs. The Cranberries recorded several demo tapes, including the three-track EP, Nothing Left At All, which sold 300 copies. Their early demo, featuring Linger and Dreams, caught the attention of the UK press and record companies, leading to a bidding war and ultimately signing with Island Records. After changing their name to The Cranberries, they released a four-track EP, Uncertain. During the early days, Dolores faced challenging touring conditions, with minimal income and poor accommodations. Despite her initial shyness on stage, she quickly gained international attention with the release of their debut album, Everybody Else Is Doing It, So Why Can't We, which included hits like, Dreams and Linger. In 1994, Dolores injured her cruciate ligament in a skiing accident but continued to rise to fame with the release of Zombie, the lead single from the album, No Need to Argue. The song reached number one on several charts and became a massive international hit. The album was the best-selling worldwide in early 1995 and featured other successful tracks like Ode to My Family, I Can't Be With You, and Ridiculous Thoughts. By this time, the Cranberries, fueled by Dolores's powerful voice, had achieved global success and widespread acclaim. Dolores distanced herself from Sinead O'Connor due to constant comparisons in the media, expressing frustration over the analogy. After re-injuring her leg, three scheduled concerts in Ireland for December 1994 were postponed which led to some negative press coverage despite fans being understanding of the delay. In January 1995, she performed at London's Royal Albert Hall and appeared on the cover of Rolling Stone in March. She sang Ave Maria with Luciano Pavarotti at a charity concert in September 1995, where she also performed Linger with Simon Le Bon of Duran Duran. The Cranberry's third album, To the Faithful Departed, debuted at number two in the UK and number four in the US, featuring singles like Free to Decide, When You're Gone, and the hit Salvation. However, during the tour promoting the album, the band cancelled the remaining dates due to Dolores' declining health and exhaustion. She later admitted to struggling with depression and an eating disorder during this period. Dolores ultimately decided to take a break in 1997, a move that was supported by her bandmates despite objections from their management and record label. On November 12, 1998, Dolores and Fergal Lawler presented the Best Song Award at the MTV Europe Music Awards. A month later, the Cranberries performed at the Nobel Peace Prize concert in Oslo. They released Bury the Hatchet, which showcased a more mature sound. The album topped the Canadian Albums Chart and the European Top 100 Albums but was less commercially successful than earlier albums. Their world tour, from April 1999 to July 2000, was their largest yet. Their next album, Wake Up and Smell the Coffee, came out in October 2001. 
That December, Dolores performed at the Vatican's Christmas concert, broadcast to over 200 million viewers worldwide. In 2002, they donated proceeds from Time Is Ticking Out to the Chernobyl Children's Project. She performed again at the Vatican Christmas concert that December. In 2003, Dolores and Brian Johnson of ACDC planned to collaborate on a rock opera, but the project was postponed. The Cranberries then took a break to focus on solo projects. Dolores felt trapped by her fame and needed time to focus on her family, health, and solo career. Enjoying a more ordinary life in Canada, she volunteered at her children's school. In 2003, Dolores started working on solo material with Canadian producer Dan Brodbeck and musicians like drummer Graham Hopkins and bassist Marco Mendoza. Steve DeMarkey, who had previously performed with the Cranberries, joined as the main guitarist. The group's chemistry was based on personality and shared musical tastes. Dolores continued to perform, appearing at various events and collaborating with artists such as Zaccaro and Angelo Badalamenti. She performed at the Vatican's Christmas concert multiple times and was featured in films and albums by other musicians. In April 2006, she signed with Chula Management and made a cameo in the film Click. That year, she also signed a solo record deal with Sanctuary Records after deciding to go independent, ending her contract with UMG. The music video for Ordinary Day, directed by Caswell Coggins, was filmed in Prague in February 2007. Dolores O'Riordan's solo album Are You Listening? was released in May 2007, peaking at number 23 on the Billboard Top Rock Albums chart. The first single, Ordinary Day, was released in April and produced by Martin Glover. The second single, When We Were Young, followed in August. Dolores promoted the album with televised live performances and toured across Europe, North America, and South America. In August 2007, Sanctuary Records, which had released her album, was acquired by UMG. Due to illness, she cancelled the remainder of her European tour in November but performed in a few small American clubs in December. In 2008, Dolores won an EBBA award, recognizing her success in reaching international audiences. In January 2009, the Cranberries considered reuniting after an event at Trinity College Dublin, celebrating Dolores' appointment as an honorary member. In August, she released her second solo album, No Baggage, featuring singles The Journey and Switch Off The Moment. The album, however, received mixed reviews and did not match the success of her earlier work. On the 25th of August 2009, Dolores announced the Cranberries Reunion World Tour, which included 107 concerts. The tour began in North America in November 2009, moved to South America in January 2010, and Europe in March. The band performed both solo material and classic Cranberry songs. Dolores experienced vocal cord nodules later in 2010, leading to cancellations and postponements until 2012. On 1 July 2011, she performed with the Sinfonia Varsovia Orchestra in Warsaw, Poland. By 2011, she was managed by Danny Goldberg and continued touring with the Cranberries across Asia. The band recorded their sixth album, Roses, released in February 2012. The Cranberries cancelled a show in Sydney on the 22nd of March 2012 due to Dolores' food poisoning, but resumed the tour two days later. In May 2012, they postponed two North American concerts, citing Dolores' hectic schedule. For the European leg of the Roses tour, Dolores hired a backup vocalist, Joanna Kranich. In November 2012, Dolores revealed she struggled to perform Ode to My Family due to her father's passing in 2011. In the 2013-14 season of Tay's The Voice of Ireland, Dolores replaced Sharon Corr as a mentor, leading her act Kelly Lewis to the final, where Lewis placed second. In October 2013, Dolores and Marco Mendoza began working on songs for her planned third solo album and potential film projects. Her final performance at the Vatican Christmas concert was in December, featuring a mix of her solo and classic songs. Dolores was also invited to perform at Limerick's New Year's Eve celebration, where she played with the Irish Chamber Orchestra. In January 2014, she announced she had written 15 new songs and planned to work on her album in Los Angeles. However, by April, she expressed disillusionment with the music industry and decided not to return for a second season of The Voice of Ireland due to health issues. Dolores began working with Jetlag and formed the band DARK, releasing the album Science Agrees in September 2016. The Cranberries released Something Else in April 2017, featuring acoustic versions of their hits and three new songs. The album was well received, and Dolores' vocals were praised for their maturity. In May, the Cranberries began a world tour featuring acoustic concerts. 
After 11 shows, Dolores' back issues led to the cancellation of the remaining tour dates. Her last public performance was on 14 December 2017 at Billboard's Christmas Party. Eminem's album Revival, released on 15 December 2017, included a sample of the Cranberry Zombie in his song, In Your Head. Personally, Dolores married Canadian-born Don Burton, former tour manager of Duran Duran, on 18 July 1994 at Holy Cross Abbey in County Tipperary. They had three children and a stepson from Burton's previous relationship. The couple initially lived in the coach house near Ballyhannon Castle in County Clare and later built an ultra-modern house in Dunquin County Kerry, but sold it soon after. In 1998, they purchased Riversfield Stud in Kilmallock County Limerick, which they sold in 2004. They moved to Howth County Dublin, and spent summers at a log cabin in Buckhorn, Ontario. By 2009, they lived full-time in Buckhorn, Ontario. In November 2011, Dolores' father passed away after battling cancer. In July 2013, the family moved to Abington, Dublin. Dolores publicly shared her struggles with mental health and abuse, including an attempt to take her life and eating disorders. In November 2013, she and her family moved back to Canada but returned to Ireland later that year. Dolores and Burton divorced in September 2014 after 20 years of marriage. She struggled with depression and alcohol use, eventually moving to New York City. In November 2014, she was arrested for air rage on an Aer Lingus flight, resulting in a psychiatric hospital stay and legal charges. In January 2015, Dolores bought an apartment in the East Village, New York City, and began a relationship with U.S. musician Ole Koretsky. In 2017, she purchased a new house near Limerick. In May 2017, Dolores revealed she had been diagnosed with bipolar disorder in 2015. She described music as a therapeutic outlet rather than a commodity. Reflecting on her struggles with depression, particularly after her father and mother-in-law's deaths, Dolores' final social media post, Looking to the Future, occurred on 4 January 2018. Sadly, on 15 January 2018, Dolores O'Riordan was found unresponsive in her London hotel room and pronounced dead at 9.16 am, at age 46. The inquest concluded she accidentally drowned in a bath after drinking heavily. Five empty miniature champagne bottles and prescription drugs were found in her room. Her blood alcohol content was 0.33%, but medication levels were therapeutic. Dolores was in London for work with Martin Glover and BMG. She had arrived on the 14th of January and spoke to her mother at 2 a.m. on the 15th before her death. Her funeral was held from 20 to the 22nd of January in her hometown and was buried alongside her father on the 23rd of January at St. Albies Church, Ballybricken, County Limerick. And there you have it. Thank you for joining us as we remembered the life of Dolores O'Riordan, a truly unique talent who touched millions with her voice and lyrics. Though she is no longer with us, her music continues to inspire and resonate. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more stories about your favorite artists. Take care and bye for now.